It came up. Okay, so we decided to do our project on um, CVS and the prescription refill process of a patient coming into the store and picking up their prescription. All right, so a little background. The company is located in Woodbury, New Jersey. CVS is a pharmaceutical retail company that has locations scattered across the United States. They sell prescription and over-counter drugs, including general merchandise, food cosmetics, and film services. And then, yeah, this is, we visited the 23rd and 24th. This specific location is one of the company's highest volume pharmacies in the area. <laughs> And it's also open 24 hours, which leads to constant long wait times and backed up lines for customers trying to pick up or refill prescriptions. The high volume makes pharmacists and pharmacy technicians rush at work, which can lead to possible delays and mistakes. Uh, in an audit, an error rate of almost 22% uh, occurred, which is 66 out of 305 prescriptions. We believe with better marketing of the company's pre- mobile pre-orders and delivery services, along with improved performance by pharmacy employees, prescriptions can be received more efficiently with improved customer satisfaction. So for the problem statement specific, wait times for prescriptions are too long and the errors with refilling scripts occur too often. For measurable, the process for customers coming in stores for prescription refills is constantly delayed because the large amount of customers at the location for attainable, our group has the necessary resources to accomplish our goal by reducing the time it takes to fill customers' prescriptions. For relevant, the time spent filling prescriptions can drastically be reduced to serve more customers at the location and build strong relationships. For time bound, our group is looking to receive a better understanding of the business process for CVS in order to reduce the amount of time it takes to refill a prescription within the next four weeks. So defining the voice of the customers, um, we first needed to see what the needs of the customers were, um, what dissatisfiers, satisfiers, and delighters would be. Um, dissatisfiers uh, were that it would take too long for the pharmacy to uh, fill the prescription. We decided that more than one day would be far too long. Um, and if the prescription was not correct, uh, a satisfier would be if the employees refilled the prescription within a day um, and the prescription was accurate and suitable. And a delighter would be if it was uh, managed to be refilled within an hour, which is really hard to do, but what we would shoot for. Um, and then the prescription is fully accurate as well as being effective. So what we saw was that critical to customers would be the speed um, and that would be within a day and the prescription accuracy would also be um, critical, specifically that there were no flaws and that the medication was effective. Yeah, so to go over the process map, this is gonna be the process of getting uh, a prescription refilled at a CVS store. Um, you know, usually this process will initiate when uh, the customer uh, does a, well, they get a handwritten prescription from their doctor. Uh, or you get an electric prescription, which is also the same thing of going to uh, your primary care doctor and then uh, uh, sending, scanning that to uh, a CVS pharmacy of your choice. And also the mobile uh, also would also scan and send the order to the actual CVS pharmacy. Um, this has to go through a process of, of, of it should, if it, if, oh, excuse me, of it, if it, <laughs> As the other process of it, it, if it should be, there we go, if it should be refilled, <laughs> which is in their system, and then by doing so, it does an insurance check. Um, and the insurance check um, basically uh, ensures that, the, you know, that that customer has insurance and that it can go and do a DUR check. This DUR check is basically, uh, it's just a check with the physician to make sure that the actual prescription is supposed to be sent to that customer and by doing so it uh, it allows for uh, CVS to uh, approve of that prescription to go to that certain customer um, and then that goes through uh, it gets sorted and refilled the prescription <clears throat> excuse me and then that goes through a quality control uh, inspection and this quality control inspection makes sure that there's enough pill bottles excuse me that there's enough uh, 
uh, drugs or pills inside that specific bottle and that the order is, um, is um, you know, is what, is what it should be. And by doing so, this will actually go, uh, this will actually get approved and it will go to the customer where the customer can, it'll send a notification to the customer where they can pick it up. And yeah, that's good. <clears throat> Um, and basically for the value stream map, uh, we noticed that the only thing that we, uh, that adds value is going to be the sort and fill prescription. Uh, you know, basically the fact that you can sort and fill a prescription, you're going to add value to the, uh, not only to the company, but to the actual customer, because this is the, this is the product that they need. And by doing so, this also sends out a metric of, you know, some type of indicator on how much was, uh, was, uh, filled or a specific order and how that can overall uh, process that uh, portion of, of the uh, of fulfilling a prescription. Um, and then obviously we have the non-value adding, which is gonna be majority of the actual process of getting a prescription refilled. Um, and, and then neither or the non-value necessary is always gonna be, you know, the insurance part of it, paying without insurance that has to do with the process that you kind of need to follow and obviously sending out the prescription and the customer picking it up. So, yeah. So we measured, we took the time of five patients who came into the pharmacy for one day to get a prescription refill. We analyzed the time it took for them to actually receive it as long as the time it took for the pharmacist and the pharmacy technicians to complete each step in the process. Running the bottlenecks through DISCO, we were able to see that the two biggest bottlenecks are the insurance and DUR check. Um, the insurance and DUR checks can cause delays due to difficulties to receive information in a timely manner. And the best solution to that would be to actually run both the insurance check and the DUR check at the same time. Um, there's no reason that couldn't be done, uh, specifically because um, they don't really affect each other, but they're both necessary for the next step. Um, and then the other one would be actually sorting and filling the prescription. However, that is a necessary bottleneck as they, um, that is our value adding target. So with that, um, it's, the bottleneck itself can be reduced through efficiency in other areas of the uh, value map. So in regards to talk uh, calculations, we were able to assess the talk time for this specific uh, pharmacy, CVS pharmacy. Talk time is the assembly time, uh, which equals uh, the net time divided by the customer demand or customer requirements. Uh, we found that this specific cut, uh, excuse me, this specific store is open 24 hours a day and average is 87 prescriptions that are requested, which therefore is 0.28 hours uh, per prescription refilled. So that's, um, you know, that's like the average time that it usually takes. And we were going to find that out by, you know, the refill request, which takes three minutes, refill approval, quality inspection. And, you know, by doing so, it gave us a total cycle time of six hours and 58 minutes. And most, excuse me, most of that lead time comes from the inventory, which, you know, obviously is, is a big discrepancy to finding out how long your, uh, prescription refill will take because if it's not in the inventory then that has to go from the distribution center which takes time but just like any fast food restaurant you know cvs is very enab enabled to make this process efficient and fast uh so everything they do it doesn't take much it takes usually minutes and obviously just depends on stuff like inventory or maybe a, a, you know the du or D, excuse me dur check or inspection You can go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, for VA time, uh, you know, we've, we've got four minutes and that's gonna be from the sort and fill prescription. The NVA time, non-value adding, that's gonna be six hours and 23 minutes. And once again, that lead, that excessive lead time comes from the inventory check, which is obviously gonna increase that uh, non-value non adding time uh, exponentially. Non-value adding necessary time is only 31 minutes and, you know, Notifying the customer, customer picking up prescription, all of that will just lead to something that is necessary for the process to keep it moving forward. Next slide, please. 
Um, this is just based off the information we got when we put it in the disco. So it's just how long each step took on an average. And as you can see, sorting and filling the prescription and the insurance and DUR check are usually the longest parts of this process. This is our fishbone diagram. These are just some things that could lead to a long process time. So you got the pharmacist and the pharmacy technician. They could take a long time to sort and fill the script along with they could have some data entry errors. The patient can take a long time to shop in the store before even picking up the script. So that could also just lead to a long process time, not necessarily being uh, the pharmacy's fault. And then another reason is if they didn't request for a refill in advance, using the mobile app or phone, that can help shorten the time by having the insurance and the DUR check already done or complete it before they even get there. That way they could just sort and fill the prescription, and just get it to the customer in a quicker time. Um, insurance provider and doctor could also not approve the insurance with issues or the DUR is not provided from the physician to the pharmacist when it's needed, which could just take longer to get that approved so it can't get to the patient as quick. Uh, the CVS store itself could have backed up lines in the store in the drive-through, especially around this time of the year when the pharmacy and the store typically are busier than usual. Also, there could be issues with our uh, POS system, like the data entry or just our regular like, cash registers. For hypothesis testing, um, we're testing, you can see if, uh, these two hypotheses here, see if the uh, null hypothesis was less than 30 minutes or not, with alpha is 0 0.05. And so we end up getting a z-score of negative 0.144, which was uh, less than the z-score for the um, null hypothesis. So we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So typically the, the process takes an average of about less than 30 minutes based on the uh, data that we collected. Um, And then so for uh, outcome factors, uh, we have our, our signal was equal to, or uh, standard deviation, sorry, uh, was equal to about nine and like nine minutes, 20, nine minutes, 20 seconds-ish, just short of 10 minutes. Um, and that's the standard deviation for from case to case. Uh, this variation is not really good for customers as it means wait times can be unpredictable. And it could even potentially turn customers over to a competitor if the wait times are, you know, inconsistent enough. Um, but the average wait time was about 29.4 minutes, or average completion time, I should say. Um, uh, case completion time under one hour is good for customers as it gives them time to do other things within the store without having them wait too long for their prescription to be um, completed. Yeah, so to go over the solution, um, we noticed that the biggest problem in our process was obviously that inventory, um, you know, having not having inventory or stock out at one of one of the locations on pharmacies is obviously going to prevent or going to extend the time it takes to get a prescription refilled. Uh, so obviously, uh, to speed that up, it would be to have more frequent inventory drop offs from the distribution center, which I think Ryan was telling me is uh, going to be located. Uh, Ryan, do you remember where the distribution center is? Like, yeah, there's one in um, Lumberton, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. so it's not going to be that far from the CVS in Woodbury. Um, and yeah, obviously, CVS tries to keep an abundance of prescription drugs on hand just so they can prevent a stockout. So, you know, by doing so, it, it, it does obviously have an effect on, you know, running out of any drugs. But once again, it obviously depends on that demand on that drug, right? And also uh, that store itself. I know the Woodbury one can be sometimes very uh, busy. And obviously we noticed that performance, the performance met metrics on refilling prescriptions is undoubtedly a key indicator on how to respond to inefficient order processing. The solution to solving uh, inefficient orders is, um, in my opinion, should be, uh, I think they have this right, which is a calculated order processor and it consolidates the inventory levels, inspection, DUR check, order capacity, and you know, on-hand staff who's working at that actual facility. By doing so, we can calculate uh, the time, we can give an estimated time frame on when order can be picked up. And basically it can also identify uh, the process that can be approved or uh, uh, you know, the metric that is not uh, doing so well for this process. Thank you.
And just to add to what Jeremy said, other uh, solutions for this could also be um, like promoting the mobile uh, or calling the store, like the mobile app, you could actually request for a refill like before coming into the store. Uh, and this could allow like the pharmacist or a pharmacy tech to get that uh, inspection and DUR check done. Like I was saying earlier, just so the sorting and refilling could be done as soon as the in-store request is done by a patient. Danny or Aiden, which, which one of you guys have this part? Sorry, that was me. I just couldn't see because um, the the pictures of the people were in the way. Benchmarking industry oh. practices. Um, so investigating multiple competitors, we saw how they were handling the refilling of prescriptions as well. Um, competitors such as Walgreens and Rite Aid offer similar refill times through their efficient pharmacies with very little error. CVS is close to or right below the benchmark due to its process um, for filling out prescriptions. The biggest issue being the errors that occur occasionally, um, but they are right on line with Walgreens as well as Rite Aid and their other competitors. So cost benefit analysis of what we would do. Um, the cost benefit analysis, the cost would be the time spent training employees on how the new process works. While the benefits um, are much larger with a speed up in the process time, less inaccuracies in prescription refills, and it could bring in new customers due to shorter times. They wouldn't have to wait as long here as they would at other pharmacies. For the to be map, our group came to the conclusion that we have like the best business process that we discovered and there's no change that needs to be made, but I did clean up the data entry swim lane a little bit to make it look a little more organized, but I didn't really make any changes. Next slide. Uh, some key lessons we learned from this is um, while data collection can be uh, relatively simple, analyzing, interpreting, interpreting the data is often challenging. Um, you know, just cause, you know, I mean, you can see a bunch of numbers, but hard to make sense of them sometimes. Um, and then data must be collected very carefully though, because if you uh, draw some conclusions from the data and the data is inaccurate, your conclusions might actually be more harmful than helpful in the long run. And then uh, you've all heard the phrase, uh, if any broke, don't fix it. But you know, with processes, just because the process works does not mean it's necessarily the most efficient. So you should always be looking to improve and uh, analyze and evaluate your process just to, just to make sure that your company is always getting better. Next slide. So our executive summary, um, the define phase, we, um, CVS's prescriptions take too long to be filled with some errors occurring um, measure. Um, the average cycle time is seven hours um, with the tack time being about half an hour. Uh, we also measured and chartered the average times for individual steps. For the analyze phase, uh, we determined that the major bottleneck is the insurance and DUR check. Uh, improve, our analysis shows that bottleneck step uh, can be reduced by doing it in congruence rather than at separate times. So again, just having insurance and DUR occur together. And then uh, control would be, um, the process will continue to be measured after the new system is implemented and results will be tracked. So I got our uh, project charter approved by the store manager, Robert Bosco. He's going to try and focus on improving the prescription refill time along with training pharmacy and pharmacy workers to decrease the time of each process steps. And he's going to try and measure the performance of these solutions by checking out the pharmacy sales. If there's an increase in sales or prescriptions given per day or per hour, along with uh, customer feedback reviews. And that's pretty much all we have for today. If you guys have any questions about this, please let us know. Thank you for listening. Professor, to answer one of your questions from while you were um, asking during the actual presentation, um, 
there isn't really a way to have insurance and DUR done before coming to the pharmacy unless they um, put in their refill for the prescription. It happens as soon as they put in their refill for the prescription. So if someone happens to put in their refill as they enter the store, there's no way to do it in advance. However, yeah. if they were to do it through the um, mobile or online, we are able to get a jump start on that before they actually enter the store. And that is one thing that uh, my manager did say he was going to try and promote more. Actually, all of CBS is trying to do that right now, uh, promote like their mobile app and delivery available, but that could allow, if you're not getting it delivered and you are coming in to pick it up still, if you do put in the refill request on the app or online or even just calling, that could shorten up the time. Anyone else have any questions? Oh yeah, Ryan, what about the uh, inventory check? Do you think uh, you said an inventory check can take up to four or five hours? And I think that's uh, definitely an area that can be improved. What do you think about that? How do you think you can, or your business can, uh, CPS can improve that inventory check? Uh, yeah, like I saw you say, it probably, even though this store is a 24 hour store and the pharmacy is open all night, it definitely is slower. So that is a good idea. Definitely be done at night. However, it is hard because CVS uh, typically holds um, almost $5 million worth of uh, inventory and in, like drugs in the prescription which, or in the pharmacy, which is more than like their competitors like Rite Aid and Walgreens. However, yeah, definitely when it's, um, slower times inventory check can be done to make the sorting and filling process of when they're actually refilling a prescription uh, quicker. Yeah, so that method is uh, widely used in manufacturing industry. So because, you know, if equipment failure happens and they cannot run the whole factory, so they are very careful about having everything ready before running their business. Uh, so the maintenance happens in the evening or while another machine is working, they work on that so that they can do things in parallel. So, um, you know, I understand that uh, there's a limitation, but if you think that this is a major area that CBS can improve, then you may want to make a recommendation to the manager. You know, look at the data. It takes four to, four to five hours to check inventory and that's not acceptable and we can do better. So let's do this. Something you can suggest and work with the manager, I think. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I found, as I made a, a comment, you know, hypothesis test says that you reject a null hypothesis. Uh, meaning that uh, your cycle time is less than 30 minutes, which meet your target. Now, however, when I looked at the data, I don't think that is right conclusion because your standard deviation is seven, what, what was the, your uh, standard deviation? 7.5 minutes? I believe so, I'd have to check. I thought it was more like 9.3 maybe or something like that. Yeah, 9.3 minutes. So if your standard deviation is 9.3 minutes and your average is 29.5 minutes, I don't think you can reject a null hypothesis. So uh, you may want to run the analysis again. And uh, uh, equal sign does not go into null hypothesis, but alternative hypothesis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got confused. Yeah, it goes into the null hypothesis. You're, you're right. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I would like to encourage uh, class to make a comment to this uh, project. You know, can you please make any suggestion or comments? Uh, they have done a very good job, uh, except for a few things, uh, especially the, the to be chart that. I, I do think you should reflect the suggestions, solutions into your to be chart. That has to be definitely done. Uh, other than that, uh, the class can make comments now. I will open it, open the floor for you now.
oh, somebody's honking. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's me living on a main road. <laughs> oh, wow. It's pretty street. <laughs> yeah, it's loud. Okay, guys. Um, so if you don't have any comment, thank you for your presentation today. I, I you know, I, I loved your presentation. I gave you comments. Hopefully those comments will be helpful for you to revise. And uh, I'm glad that you guys uh, worked hard. Oh, I don't see the video. Did, did you guys include the video on I mean, Disco? Uh, we did use Disco. However, for like my SPC charts, I just used Disco to analyze the data, but I just did it on Excel. Okay. That would be easier just to make the chart on Excel. I see. But we do have a Disco file we'll submit with the project. Okay, gotcha.